Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about asynchronous calls and to explain how we can use uh, asynchronous calls, how we can make asynchronous calls, I'm going to use my list view demo here. So for loading this list view, what I had done, I had uh, uh, initialized my employees observable collection here in the view model and I was adding employees in the view model. But that's not the typical case, right? Normally you get, you consume a service and service gets data from the database and then you assign those objects to your list view, right? So to mock that uh, scenario, what I've done here, I have created this employee service. And in this employee service, I have defined this employee function, which is getting employees from the, from the database. At least that's what I'm showing. Uh, so what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna comment out this code. I do not want to add employees when I initialize my view model. What I wanna do here, I want to get my employees from my service, my employee service. Cool. So I'm gonna say get employee service, get employees. And to make it more realistic, what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna add some delay here. I'm gonna say that, okay, there's some network issue, the network is slow or the database is slow and it takes four seconds to get data from the database. Okay, let's run this and see how it looks like. So you can see that the application is running but, it, but it's waiting for four seconds to populate the data. It's not even showing the toolbar. There you go. Now it's showing the data. Let's go to some other page. I'm going to go to enrollment page and the page gets loaded pretty quickly and it, because it doesn't have any de delay there. But when I click on this employee list, you can see that the screen is frozen and I can't really do anything. And that's a bad user experience. When you have delay on your screen, you want to show a loading symbol. You want to show user that you have to wait for your response. So why is this happening? This is happening because we are making a synchronous call here. So every time we make request, we are waiting for server to get the response back. What I want to do, I want to make an asynchronous call. So when I make the request to the server, I'll do my own thing and server will do its own thing. And whenever the response is ready, it will send the response and then the client will show the response. It's just like your normal life. You know, when you go to a restaurant, you make an order, you don't keep on looking at the server, right? You either after making the order, you, you chit chat with your friends, you make a phone call, you check your phone, you do, you multitask at that level. So that's what I want to do my, in my programming too. So how do we achieve that? .NET has this async and await keywords. And using these keywords, we can run tasks parallelly. We don't have to run tasks on the UI thread. We can run the tasks on some other thread. Okay, so how do we achieve that? Uh, to make your function a synchronous function, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put async func, async keyword here. We're gonna get some errors here, but we'll fix these errors. Uh, after putting these keywords, it's throwing an error saying that you can't uh, if you're using, if you're making a function, a synchronous function, you can't have the return type observable employees. What you can do, you'll either have to have task or task of something. Okay, that works. So we'll, what we'll do here, I'm going to say that we have task of observable employees here. Okay, so but once you change the return type of your function, you'll have to change the return type here too. So uh, to fix that issue, I'm going to say from result task dot from result of employees. Okay. And as this is an async function, we'll have to insert an await keyword here so that the function knows that you have to wait for the response. Okay. Now our function is an asynchronous function, but because we made our function a synchronous function, we are getting an error here. We are saying that it's saying that first of all, you can't catch a uh, task of observable collection into observable collection here. So let's just get rid of it. <clears throat> I don't want to assign my employees there anyways, but still we're getting a warning. It's saying that you can't, you can't call an asynchronous function from a synchronous function. So how do we fix that? To fix that, I'm going to go back to task 
and say that okay i want to run a battle a battle function here an asynchronous function here async async function here and um i'm gonna call that function um and i can do whatever in that function this will run parallelly and what we run want we want to get employees parallelly so to get the employees we can just run we can say that okay run this task parallelly but do we'll have to put uh a await keyword in front of it to make it work right okay there you go so what we're doing here is we're saying okay initialize the view model but run another thread to get the employees um so we are getting the employees now we'll have to assign these employees to our observable collection here so let's let's do that employees awesome so um okay so but it's not looking nice here on view model so to make it look nicer i'm gonna create a function i'm gonna say that public void load employees and in this m function in this function i'm going to run a task parallelly and when i load my view model that's when i want to load my employees cool let's run this and see how it looks like So now you can see the application just started and you can see the toolbar now so that's nice it's not waiting the screen is not frozen now but let's count one two three four our employees are not showing anymore why is that okay so the reason why employees are not showing on the screen is because of this observable collection so when i was when i first started with the list view demo i said that you know observable collections are awesome because when you add employees into it it goes back and updates the ui saying that the employee has been added into our collection so we don't have to make our view model an mv we don't have to notify our ui saying that okay you have to update yourself but that that is only true when you're adding employees into your observable collection on ui thread if you add employees, if you assign your observable collection in some other thread other than UI thread, then it doesn't go back and update the UI. So how do we fix that? We'll just go back to our MVV and we'll, uh, we'll say that, okay, let's just notify our UI. So I'm gonna steal some of my code from my previous demo. I'm gonna say that, okay, I want to notify my UI every time my employees get updated, okay? I'm gonna I'm gonna put that here nice so what I've done here is uh, I'm uh, I'm going to notify my UI saying that my employees are are coming from uh, a service and it's gonna take some time so whenever my employees are filled in my view model and that's when you should go ahead and update the UI all right so I'm gonna create a private employee our private employees here it shouldn't be void it should be observable collection and if you're if you do not know about mvvm i've already created a video for mvvm if you go and check out my channel you can see that uh, mvvm video and i don't care what which video you watch you can watch any video you can go on internet and find out about mvvm and how it works how data binding works with samurai um so here i'm gonna return my employees and i'm going to set my employees uh, here whenever i get value from it but whenever i set my employees here i want to call on property change to it on property change to it. okay awesome let's run this and see if it works or not
So the application is loading. Now you can see the toolbar in after four seconds. There you go. So this is this is how you can use asynchronous calls in your list view if you're trying to load information from your service or database, whatever you wherever you're getting information, any network activity you should do it uh, using asynchronous calls. But what I want to do extra here is I want to add an activity indicator here. So people who do not know what activity indicator is, this this. So when you don't want to, so what's happening here is when I click on employee list, you can see a blank page. You don't want to show a blank page to user. User will try to do something. You want to show a loading uh, activity indicator here, like we are trying to load information uh, from the database. So wait for the response. So how do we achieve that? So achieve that, I'm going to go to my, my UI here. Let's stop uh, that it's running here. And uh, I'm going to add an activity indicator. And activity indicator has is running property, which I'm going to say true for now is running. And I'm going to say is visible too, because I don't want to show activity indicator blank. Okay, so we have this is running true and is visible true. But the problem here is we don't want to show that it's loading all the time. We want to bind this is running and is visible properties to some view model property so that every time when we are getting the information from the database, that's the only time it's showing loading. Okay, so to achieve that, I'm going to um, go to my employee view model here and create a property saying that um, this is a Boolean property and it is is busy. It's busy, which we will set when we are pulling information from the database. And I'm gonna make a private Boolean here uh, to make it work, to make it work with UI. Okay, so when you get information, get lbz, the private property. And when you want to set, you should set the private property and call on property change tenant. Okay, and I want to set this lbz property when we start um, lbz, uh, when we start getting the value, when we start getting the value. And once we're done getting the value, I want to set is busy to false. Awesome. And I'm going to go back here in my UI and instead of, you know, having the hard coded value, I'm going to bind this to is busy and um, bind it to is busy. Let's run this and see if this works. So when I run the application, the application is loading and it should show the page, it should show the toolbar and then it should show the loading symbol and once it's done loading, it should go away and show the list view. Well, let's go, try to go back to the page here. There you go. So that's how you can show the loading symbol. That's how user waits for the response. And once it's once it got the response, then the loading symbol goes away. Also, so this is how you can make asynchronous calls and uh, show activity indicator on your pages. If you have any questions, let me know in comment section. Um, and in my next video, I'm going to show search bar, how you can search in your list view. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned. This was Fahad. Thanks for watching this video. Bye.